both of you. <laughs> I'm glad I caught that on camera. Yeah, that would be a great intro. Yeah. Take Jeff. You an asshole. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So any questions from homework? Yes. Which section? Four three. Number forty. I'm guessing this is a new book, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, so if it's anything beyond the basics, that's appropriately named, right? So this is beyond what we normally do, but this shouldn't be too evil. <laughs> if events A and B are disjoint, and let me give you a hint. I'm not going to fully finish this, but I really almost am. If events A and B are disjoint, if you try to draw them like you did the, the Venn diagram with the circles, mm -hmm. what would have to be true about those circles if they are disjoint? They can't be touching, right? So here's A, here's B. All right, so maybe like dogs and cats or, or you know, forgetting the cartoon. Um, and then it says, and B and C are disjoint. So what must be true about C if I want to draw it up there? The only thing that I know must be true is that C cannot touch B. So basically it's done. Is it necessarily true that A and C don't touch? Of course not. That's kind of silly, right? Once you start to draw this, A and B can't touch, B and C can't. So one way to do it is this, but the question really is, is that the only way to do it? No, I can have these guys touching. There's nothing that says they can't. So they can be disjoint and joint. I want to be real. A and B are disjoint. Yeah. B and C are disjoint. Mm -hmm. I've drawn a picture that represents that setup. Must A and C be disjoint? Must they be disjoint? Could they? Of course they could. Must they be? No, they don't, they don't have to be. Okay. So the easiest way to answer this is to start drawing a picture and seeing, does, it for, does what they tell me force me to not have these touch? No. He can't touch him. He can't touch him. They can touch each other all day. That's getting a little weird. <laughs> okay, cool. So they can be both joined and disjoint. No, hell no. Again, there are no sets up there that are both joint and disjoint. A and B are disjoint. C and B are disjoint. Mm -hmm. Period. A and C, I guess you'd say they're joint. Right? <laughs> I would call them mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no no way that they could be both. Yeah. Yes. Uh, can we do 15 on 4-4? Four, four? Oh, good. All right, so hold on to that one. That's one of the things we've got to fill in for today. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, okay. So what's it say? Oh, yeah, one of my favorite. I hate that it's not in the new one. Uh, okay. Do you want an old one to look at? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So four, four, right? Four, five. Four, five. Number... 18? Okay. So 24.9% of robberies are cleared with arrests. If you watch too many TV shows, you'll think it's closer to 100%. Um, a new detective is assigned to 10 different robberies. What's the probability that at least one of them is cleared with an arrest? Oh, yeah, okay, so this is... Again, this is uh, part of what we have to clear up. So that last question and this question, let me put this up here. Let me finish putting this up here for later. Uh, this probably clears all ten robberies.
and then C is, what do we conclude? All right, so we'll do that here in a minute. Okay, so let me hold on to that. You got your book back. Which book is you? This is you. <laughs> all right, so anything else before I get into what that's all about? So, redundancy is that idea of having more than one lock on your door. So, uh, that gets into the probability of and. So, to have redundant systems, to have the whole, if I had three things in place, so I have one system, two system, three system, right, like the O-rings we're talking about, the challenger. Remember that? Or if you heard the others? Yeah. Um, uh, so, this, say that this one has a 1% chance of failure. So, they all have a 1% chance of failure. He's running. If he dies, this one will turn on. If he dies, this one will turn on. So, the only way my system will stop working is if all three of them die. And what's the probability of all three of them? This one has a die, and this one has a die, and that one has a die. What's the probability that's going to happen? Yeah, it'll be 0.01 and, which means multiply. So it'll be 1% of 1% of 1%. Pretty tiny. So that's the idea of redundancy. That's why you like to build redundancy into your computer systems, into your nuclear uh, facilities, into your door, into your locks, into your alarm clocks, right? Me and my phone and my alarm clock both going off. If I'm at a conference, I always have the wake-up call and my alarm clock go off, right? Just because I'm a geek. <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. All right, cool. Anything else from <laughs> Chapter 4? Oh, yeah, so what is it that I have to check to see if two things are independent? What is the test for independence? Yes, if the probability of A given B, so B happens, and A doesn't care, which means his probability would stay the same. If that's true, if B happens and A does not change, doesn't it make sense that that means they're independent? Mm -hmm. They don't care about each other. Mm -hmm. One does not affect the chances of the other one happening. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it, that's it. So if I ask you, are these two independent? Let me say this. This is a note because I'm slowing down and making a point of this. If I ask you on a test or a double quiz, are these two events independent? You cannot get any credit for explaining to me in a paragraph, well, yeah, some guy is going to be this person. No, you've got to show me this. It's got to be answered mathematically. That's the only way you can do it. You've got to show me that. If you think they're independent, you've got to show me that. If you think they're dependent, you show me that this is different from this. And don't worry, on the handout, on the practice quiz, I've got one exactly like that. So we'll do that. Yeah? Question about the double quiz. Are we going to be allowed the formula sheet on it? Yes, good. So we'll go over a formula sheet you can put together. We'll go over that next time. Yeah. Anything else from the homework? All right, good. Um, all right, so let's figure out this and let's figure out number 14. I think it was the one you were talking about, 15, 15. So here's a couple things that are missing from what we talked about so far. Um, what you got, Jeff? If I pick two cards from a deck of cards, what's the probability that they're uh, and this is without replacement. So if I pick two cards from a deck of cards without replacement, what's the probability that they're both aces? 
How do I do that problem? What word is hidden? And. The first one's got to be an ace. And the second one's got to be an ace. So what I really want you guys to realize, you can do your, what I call a little hangman game. I put two spots there because i got two cards i got to pick. What's well, probably the first one is an ace. So do it one more time. 4 to 52. And what would you say? Got to be careful. It's not only one ace. I was hoping maybe you said 1 out of 13. But yeah, there's four aces out of 52 cards. i got four chances to get what I want. Then I throw it away. All right? Or charge it and I throw it at one of the evil mutants. And then what's probably the next one's an ace? 3 out of 51. Good. So hopefully this idea we're kind of used to so far, right? And what do you get there? One out of four. Second? Four and a half percent. Right, I'll take your word for it. All right, so that's not too bad, right? Now, if I said, now, this was not that difficult to kind of keep track of this. If I say, if I let you know that 11%, this is still roughly true, 11% of Americans are left handed. Ten or eleven? Point four five percent. Point four five percent. Okay. If I told you eleven percent of Americans are left-handed, and I want to pick three Americans, of course this is going to be without replacement. I don't want to pick the same dude over and over again. You kind of with me? The big mistake people make, and I want to show you why the math is so much easier than this. This one, if I don't change this, that's going to change this a lot. If I kept this to be 4 out of 52, wouldn't that number be very different? Yeah. Or different enough? Yeah. Does that kind of make sense? Because mm -hmm. 3 out of 51 is very different from 4 out of 52, mm -hmm. if you do them on your calculator. How many Americans are there? A lot. A lot? It's like 320 million, I think it is, close to, or around. So my, if I wanted to make fractions out of this, I'd first have to figure out what's 11% of 320 million, and then the first one being a left-hander would be that out of 320 million times that over 319 million, 999,999. Do me a favor, uh, let's just figure this out real quick. What's 11% of 320 million? You guys have calculators? You can do it. 35.2 million. All right, yeah. so 35.2 million. So to do this, I'd have to do 35.2 million out of 320 million. And actually, let me, let me do this all the way out. Times 35199999 out of 319999999. You know, at this point, you're like, I'm tired, just right. <laughs> But I mean, how different are these? Somebody help me out. What's that divided by that? Of course, it's going to be 11% because that's where we got that from. Now, what's that divided by that? What's 35199999 divided by 319999999? Just about that. Huh? Just about that. It better be close to 11%. Or else somebody told me the wrong thing here. Too many nines. Yeah, it's like 11%, isn't it? One zero nine yeah. nine nine. nine that's, that's freaking eleven percent, isn't it? So here's the key. Here's the, here's the deal. If the number of things you're selecting, now in this case actually it was it could have still worked. If the number of things you're selecting is less than five percent of your population, you don't have to do this shit. So what's probably that all three of them are left-handed? So they're probably all three are left-handed. Here's how you can do it. And this is why, if I pick three people, am I picking more than 5% of all the people I could have? Mm -hmm. Hell no, 5% of 320 million is a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm only picking three, so this is the little rule to keep straight. And this is the beautiful thing I could do if that's true. If I'm picking less than 5% of my population, I could just keep this number the same, because it basically is the same. So it would be, the first guy is left-handed, so what would that probably be? What would that probably be? 
Yeah, point 11. And the next one, point 11. And the next one, point 11, which I can actually write as point 11 to the, which makes sense, three of these, right? And what's point 11 cubed? I'm getting all kinds of Point zero zero one three three one. All right, sounds right. Eleven does that kind of neat stuff. <laughs> so that would be point one three three one percent chance that if I pick three Americans, all three of them will be left-handed, which makes sense. If I just randomly pick three people from the U.S., I would expect that not all three of them would be left-handed. You guys kind of with me? Do you notice? Yes, ma'am. Um, would it be correct? I know it's like, okay. Would it be correct if you um, put that over a hundred? Isn't that how it should? That's be? the big mistake. Or I'll over one. I'll see people do this. I'll see people do this. Eleven over a hundred times ten out of ninety-nine times nine out of ninety-eight. Now, what's wrong with that? There's not only a hundred people in the U.S. Right? Mm -hmm. If there was, wow, I'll talk about space. <laughs> What's wrong if, it was, if it was 0. 0.11 over 1, but then that's like unnecessary. Pretty but much. that would be, would that be right? It is 11 over 100, okay. you're right. But the mistake people make is they think that they can then do this. Yeah. Which in a sense is not a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake, because at least you, you realize that it's got to go down like this. But that's so, at the same time, it is a horrible mistake. It's so desperately wrong. It's not only 100. If you wanted to do this, you'd have to do this. The true number goes down by one. Oh, God. I really <laughs> want you guys to realize what just happened. If I didn't tell you about this 5% rule, you would have had to do this problem like this. You would have had to have one more thing. And what if I pick seven Americans? What's wrong? They're all left-handed. This would take forever to freaking write down and, and do. But how do I do it now? If seven Americans, I want all of them to be left-handed, that would be 0.11 to, to, the to the seventh power. I want all of them to be left-handed. Yes, sir? So if you're picking less than 5% then you can do that? Then you can do that. And you can, that. And you can assume that they're independent. You can assume that the, the probabilities don't change because they effectively don't. They change so slightly that it doesn't really change the outcome. If it's less than 5%. If it's more than 5%, then they do change enough to make the outcome different. So even though two cards out of 51... I know, exactly. That is less than 5%. So I was curious, what's 4 to 52 is what percent? 7.6 roughly. And what's 7.6, so 0 0.076 times 0 0.076, what's that? Yeah, that is pretty different from that, isn't it? Yeah. So even that rule, if, if the population you're talking about is pretty small, then that rule kind of gets wobbly when it gets close to 5%. So even here, it's not really good. But the rule officially would say it's okay to do that. But normally, we're talking about really pretty big populations. So you're probably not going to get close to 5% of that population. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe. So let's do a couple problems like this, just to make sure everybody's got it down. Uh... So one problem I really like is the alarm clock problem. I can't remember if it's in the new edition or not. But let's say I have two alarm clocks. And the probability that uh, they're both the same exact bottle, same exact brand, bottle on the same day from the same store, using the same batteries, type, all that kind of crap. All right, so they're basically the same clock. Um, what's probably that uh, they both work? Or, or let's say this. Let me say it like this. What's probably that I wake up? And in order for me to wake up, what has to happen? <clears throat> At least one, not both. They don't both have to work. At least one has to work, right? That's the whole idea. If they both had to work, and how freaking deep do I sleep? <laughs> uh, so now let's talk about what at least one means. Now, I want you to realize how sucky it would be for at least one, because what does at least one mean? Either the first clock works, or the second clock works, or they both work. So that would be three problems to do. And if I make it three alarm clocks, 
now we're talking at least one would be either the first or the second or the third or the first two or the last two or all three and that's a lot of freaking work and then if I start talking about like 80 people it's probably that two of them do something either it's the first two or the middle two or the, or the, or the first one and the last one holy shit so the beautiful thing about at least one what's the opposite of at least one works what's the opposite of at least one works neither works so the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. This is huge. I, I can't impart to you how huge this is to know. This is stupid nice. You have no idea how much work it would be the other way sometimes. How do I do the probability that neither one of them works? I want the first one to not work. Oh, I didn't give you any probabilities then. So probably have an alarm clock working. Let's say that's 95, 95%. Right, I bought these at a really cheap store. 95% chance is really kind of low, actually. <laughs> I bought them at the 99 cent store because I freaking go to college and I don't have any money, right? Uh, and my credit cards are all maxed out. Um, so it's probably the first one does not work. Point of five. And the other one does not work either. 0.05. So what do you get there? What's well, 1 minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5? I mean 0 0.05 times 0 0.05. Yeah, sounds right. 9975. So you have a 99.75% chance of getting woken up, yeah. If the probability of the alarm clock works is 95%, what's probably it doesn't work? Oh. Yeah. So that's the thing to realize. If, if they ask me what's the probability that at least one does something, that's one minus the probability that none of them do that thing. So then I need the opposite probabilities in here. I want them both to not work. One minus that would mean at least one of them works. If I figure out what's probably that neither one works, one minus that is the probability that at least one of them works, because that's the opposite probability. And how do opposite probabilities relate? One is one minus the other one. So my probability with one would have been 95%, which means out of every 100 days, on average, I wouldn't get woken up five of those days. Right? Probably all five of those days would correspond to tests. The Murphy's Law kind of melding with probability. Now, 99.75% chance I'm going to wake up, which means 25 out of 10, 100,000, 10, 25 out of 10,000 days. I, I, that's damn good odds, right? So that's a huge improvement. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Let's do one more. So and then, for you to have to actually, prove no. it at least, you have to prove what it isn't. Not prove. I'm not trying to prove anything. But to get the answer for this. Now, I, I, let's take a second and do it the other way. The other way to do this one would not involve a ton of work but it would involve more work than I have to do. The other way to do the probability of at least one. What do you guys say? Uh, at least one works means what three situations? Probably first one works. Or, or means add, right? Probably second one works. Or, they both work. Now, if I do all this work, it's got to come out to be the same number down there or else you guys can stop listening to me. I have to give you all A's and I have to quit. Okay, so I actually am feeling a little pressure. So, what's well, probably the first one works, so that means the second one doesn't work. So it's the first one works, what am I going to put here? Good, I want the first one to work careful, what you say? Yeah, 95% chance that either one of them works, so 95% chance the first one works and the second one I don't want to work. 105. Plus, I want the second one to work this time. So the first one does not work. What's that? And the second one works, 95. And what about they both work? 0.95. Good, 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 good. 
Now, obviously, that was a lot more work than you needed, right? And you can imagine, this is probably the best situation to be in, do it this way. If I said seven alarm clocks, like, ooh, we're talking about some OCD happening, <laughs> right? I'm talking seven alarm clocks around, <laughs> right? This would so desperately suck. Yes. First one will work, so the second one will work, so the third one will work, so the fourth one will work, so the first three work, or the last three work, or the middle three work, or the first two work, and then, holy shit. Or one minus none. Bam, done, right? The probability of at least one, if I make it one minus the opposite, there's always one calculation I have to do and then subtract it from one. Here there could be tons of calculations to do if I do it this way. So what do you get? What's 0.95 times 0.05? 0.0475? Yeah. Sorry? 0.0475. So you get 0.0475. That's the same thing. And what's 95 times 95? <laughs> Say one more time. All right. Now, what do you get if you add all that stuff up? No, that's not crazy. Of course, they have to be the same. Of course, they have to be the same because between the two of them, this is every. Let me see how I can say this. The only ways that the only things that could happen is neither one works, right? Neither works, or the first works, or the second works, or they both work. Is that cool? By itself? Is that cool? Those are the only things that could happen here, right? If I have two alarm clocks, either they can, neither one works, or the first one works, or the second one works, or they both work. <coughs> Bless you. Nothing else can happen. Or I guess with me. So if I add them all up, it's got to be 100% or 1. Right? So one minus neither one works. If I subtract that over, that equals that. And we just proved it, right? Or we just showed it for this example. Maybe, maybe. Let's try this one. So look at this one. 24.9% of all robberies are cleared. Uh, 10 robberies, I think it said, right? Oh, shoot, this was in the old one. Wasn't it a total of 10 robberies that were investigated? Yeah, 10. 10 robberies are looked at. What's probably at least one of them is cleared. So you can quickly see I do not want to do it the other way. I do not want to do, because it could have been the first one was cleared, or the second one was cleared, or the first two were cleared, or the first seven were cleared, or the first three and the last four were cleared. Do you guys kind of see what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. You'd have to cover every single possibility. The only possibility you would leave out is none of them were cleared. So, of course, that question is the same thing as one minus none of them were cleared. It's got to be true, because the only thing that this leaves out is none. So none plus this must equal one. So this must be one minus none. That rhymed this, okay. The weird nursery rhyme. I really want this to make sense. Because right, uh, let me, real quick, what could happen here for 10 robberies? They could clear none of them? Or... One of them, or two of them, up to ten of them, right? And if I add all those up, it's got to equal one, because I've just covered all the possibilities. Are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I cover all the possibilities, it's got to add up to be one. If it didn't, I left somebody out. So what's one minus probability of zero? That. And what's that? What's another way to say this? One or two or three, what's a better way to say that? Oh. At, At least, least one. Um. So they cleared one or they cleared two or they cleared two. So the, the probability of at least <coughs> one equals one minus the opposite, the probability of none. So you can either realize that at least one is the opposite of none. Is that, is that by itself cool? That's more of an English language thing. The opposite of at least one is none. 
therefore the probabilities must be one minus one is the other one. Period. I don't want to calculate this shit. If you don't like the probability to calculate, you look at its opposite. If there's less work, you do the opposite, and then you do one minus that. So at least one is actually kind of an extreme, but it happens a lot. There's, at least one happens a ton. So how do I do this then? I mean, now I've got one calculation to do, but I have to know how the hell to do it. How many blank spots am I going to have? Ten. Ten of them. And I want each one of them to hap have what happen? I don't want any of them to be cleared, right? So what do I want in each spot? I'm going to have 10 spots. 75.1. Yes, 75.1. Good. 0. 0.751. Be sure to make it into a decimal because math doesn't like percentages. Those are something we made up for ourselves, right? Math doesn't need percentages. So even better than writing it 10 times, I'm going to have how many 0.751s? So it's 2 to the 10th power. So the probability that at least one is cleared is one minus the probability that 10 of them are not cleared. Yes, sir? 0.751 come from again? If the probability cleared is 0.249, the probability not cleared is one minus that. Okay. So the probability clear with an arrest, got to be even. Is 0.249, the probability of not clear with an arrest is one minus that. 0.751. And of course, now what do you get there? 0.057068. Should be way smaller than that, I think. Should be stupid small. 0.751 to the tenth power. Not small, but it should be. It is 0.05. That's surprising. Oh wait, so this is at least one, so that should be okay. So what'd you get again? Uh, 0.05? 70688. Okay, I'm thinking about part B. Part B is going to get more interesting. So there's almost a 6% chance that at least one of them is cleared. There's a 94.3. Oh, that's just that? Yeah. Okay, so that makes more sense. So this is the 0 0.06 roughly. So about 94% chance. All right, that's makes more sense. So there's a 94% chance that they'll have at least one of those robberies cleared. Only 6% of the time will they have none of them cleared with an arrest. Let me stop right there. That, thankfully, I mean, this number kind of is, is concerning. Only one-fourth of the time they actually arrest somebody for a robbery. Right? And how many, what percentage of those times is actually the right person? I don't know. But if I look at 10 of these things, the probability that they'll get at least one person out of those 10 is 94% chance. All right, that makes me feel a little bit better. At least they get one. Maybe he committed some of the other robberies. What the hell? How are we doing so far? The more interesting question is part B. Right? And this reminds me of the show Monk. Because it was there was an episode where this guy was pretending to be psychic, and he was actually the one doing the robberies, and that's why he knew that it was going to happen. Or doing the murders. What's the probability that the new detective would clear all ten? So this is a little more direct. I want each one of them to be cleared. So again, I'm going to have ten spots, all cleared with an arrest. What's going to be in each spot? Yeah, 0.249. So I don't have to write all my spots out. How many of those am I going to have? Ten. ten. So I want all ten to be cleared with an arrest. Now that's going to be too stupid small. What's 0 0.249 to the 10th power? 9.16 I like it. So if you do it in your calculator, you get 9.16 e negative 7 like that if you do it in your graphing calculator. <coughs> don't, don't say 9.16. Two problems wrong with that. Number one, it's wrong. And number two, it's bigger than one. How the hell did that happen? It's more than 100% chance. No. It's actually point zero 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 nine one six. That's the probability that somebody would clear all ten of them with arrests. Are you with me? So this new hot shot comes in. He clears all ten of these things with an arrest. <laughs> Looking at the probability that somebody does that, that's the probability that somebody would do that. What two options are there then for this person? Okay, there's always that. He just arrested the first person he saw. 
Hey, chief, I arrested somebody in all those 10 cases. That's a bit much, right? So let's assume at least that they think they're the right people. So that's the third option, I guess I didn't think about. What's the two main options then? Yeah, Either he committed the damn things and he's pinning on somebody else, right? Or he's getting his partner every time. Or he's just crazy good. But this is actually, I mean, this goes beyond crazy good. This is nearly impossible. This is good evidence. Statistically significant evidence. This is so far below anything to happen randomly that there must be something weird going on in this situation. And my guess would be he has some kind of knowledge about this. He's either involved in some way, you with me? Or he's applying some new thing about detectives that I don't know. He's somehow getting in there, he's got some a lot of connections, who knows? You kind of with me? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But that is evidence. By itself, this is evidence that something is weird. If it happens, and the probability it would happen is so stupid low, then there must be something strange about that situation. Either he's really good, or he's cheating somehow, or something. Or he's psychic. Why not? <laughs> you, you did. Right? Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, what was the other question? It was, it was uh, 15 on 4-4. Four, four. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good. All right. So 15, it says pre employment drug screening. Oh, it's got the little thingamajig up there. Um, So a drug test could either be positive or negative for drugs. Uh, which number up here would concern you the most if you were about to be tested for drugs? Four, four, six. Well, if you use drugs, you would be concerned, period. But if you, let's assume you don't use drugs, and you're about to go in for a drug test. Yeah, the 90. What's the 90 say? You don't use, but the result is positive. That happens, you know, false positives. The whole idea of false positives is interesting. Because the better you make your test very often, the more false positives you introduce. It's interesting. So when you get a test result and it's positive, you should not immediately freak out. Because there are a decent, a higher number of false positives than people realize. So, what this question asks, it starts off, if three of the thousand test subjects are randomly selected, what's the probability that they all had correct test results? said, what did I say? Oh, I haven't said it yet. Part A, they say with replacement, and part B, they say without replacement. So this is before you learn about the 5% rule. You with me? I think the 5% rule is in section 4-5. Because otherwise, am I selecting over 5% of the population? No, I'm selecting 0.3% of the population. I should be able to do it that way, but this is before you learn that, so we have to do it the old way. So first off, can somebody help me figure this out? What numbers would be correlated to that from the problem? Yeah, these two. That's correct, right? You use drugs, and I said you use drugs. And this is correct. You don't use drugs, and I said you don't use drugs. So how many total people do we have here? Does it say a thousand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says a thousand, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, you wrote the number there, right there, next to you. <laughs> right. I'm gonna leave myself alone. So if you do this with replacement, and I, I, I'm picking three people. So how many spots do I want to put down? Three. It's crazy. So one, two, three. I want all three of these people to have correct test results. So it's probably the first one has the correct test results. 
How many people have correct test results? Nine or four out of thousand. And of course, this will also be 904 out of 1,000, right? Because I'm doing it with replacement, so I put that person back. So somebody help me out. What's that? So 73.87%. So think about what that really means. If you have three people tested, well, actually, this is still with replacement, but and without replacement, it's not going to change that much. So if you, if you have three people tested, there's actually a 20, almost a 27%, another 26% chance that at least one of them will be wrong. It'll say they don't use when they actually use, or it'll say that they do use when they actually don't. And of course, you're hoping to be maybe one of those people, but don't. see how it at least makes that number small. What if I do this without replacement? How would the numbers change? Yeah, 904 out of 1,000 for the first guy, and then you put him in the next room over. 903 over 900. 903 out of 999. You put her over there, too. 902 out of 998. You put them in there. So this should be close to 73.87. Yeah. So see, the point this problem really tries to make is this is exactly the reason for the 5% rule. This is well below 5% of the population. So if I would have just assumed that they don't change, I could have just found out that this is 0.0904% and just did that to the third power. I don't have to have them change as I move along. Because my sample I'm selecting is so much smaller than the whole population, they're not going to change that much from step to step. So this is before you learned it, but this is kind of a precursor to say, hey, there's got to be a better way. They were so close. Why don't I just do it the easy way? Do that to the third power. Be done with it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. So anything else from homework? That's pretty funny because that pretty much covered what I was going to lecture on. Huh? Not this early. Don't get overly optimistic. Um... <laughs> So what I want you to do is to work on this. We work on this together <laughs> or alone. A lot of work. Oh, yeah, I worked like. 30 something hours in three days. Yeah. I'm exhausted. No, it's fine. I'm broke. I need a word. Thank you. I was like, pretty happy. How's your week? It was really good. What did you do? Um, well, my my stew had an entire block party, and so like um, I my neighbor's band, and people, like we blocked off the street, and like one of my neighbor's bands came out and played, and like another neighbor um, works at a nursery, like a plant nursery thing, and he brought these special plants over that attract butterflies. So our street was filled with monarch butterflies. Yeah, and like oh, one, so cool. yeah, we like streamed lights um, every which way from like all of our houses and like have these really pretty yeah, like Chinese so lanterns and like one of my neighbors made like gumbo and another one made ribs and like another one did burgers.